Welcome, everyone. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants, along with Nicole Young, who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or CORE Investments. And CORE is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. We're co-facilitating today's conversation on harnessing local data to create the core conditions for economic security and social mobility with Eva Holt Russmore from Data Share Santa Cruz County and Eric Morris from the Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency. And today's session, like other core events, is being held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team members, Stella Lauerman, who's providing interpretation today, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat and whose voice you're hearing now. And now I will turn this over to Eva. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy to be here today. I'll just say a couple words about data share and then I'd, um, I'll talk a little bit more about um, how we're thinking about the data uh, that is shared on the platform right now. So if you're less familiar with DataShare, it's an interactive and accessible data sharing platform. We have over 400 indicators um, which provide equity-centered data and aim to promote community action and evidence-based policy. The indicators on the site come from local, state, and national sources. We're constantly updating um, the data and the reports so that it is the most current information available. The Platform aims to be a central hub of information and create alignment, allowing everyone to measure outcomes with the same metrics and indicators. And it allows for easy visualization of previously static data sets that are important to our community, such as the community assessment project and other integration of data sets that weren't previously available to the public, such as the safety net uh, clinic utilization data. <clears throat> So students, researchers, advocacy groups, um, people doing evaluation or grant writing and fundraising have um, been utilizing this platform since we launched it in 2019. And we get about 10,000 users a year at this point. Um, and we've been really thinking deeply about how we want to um, take action on our values. So we've created an equity framework for our data and our platform. Um, thank you, Nicole. Um, and I just want to share these with you all um, to help think about as we're looking at the data today, um, where, uh, where decision making is happening and how we can um, prioritize uh, important data from our community. Um, so we, I'll just let you read this slide for a moment. So these are rich guiding principles that data share administrative partners and myself and Eric who are uh, operationalizing our values um, refer back to when we make choices around communications and data uploads. If you can go to the next slide, thank you. There's eight total guiding principles which have been really helpful for us. Thank you. And I'm happy to look at these today with the whole group. Thanks, Eva. So next up, we wanted to start uh, our tour of the core results menu. So let me share my screen and you're welcome to follow along. This is, this is what we're gonna do um, in the rest of today's session is take a deeper dive into some of these indicators. So let me just show This is the data share um, homepage, the landing page. I just wanna point out it has a translation feature in the upper right as well. And so 
The core results menu, the way to get to it is to click on local progress. And the first thing under local progress is the core results menu on data share. So there, there are many paths to this, but that's the streamlined one. And so when you get there, you can see the core conditions listed there with what might be a familiar graphic for, for many of you by now. And then if you scroll down, there's the menu. And so for each of those core conditions, there are community impacts and indicators associated with them. So today we are focusing on the economic security and social mobility set of impacts and indicators. Previously, we did a tour of the health and wellness ones and lifelong learning and education, and we'll be working our way through these um, as we move through the fall as well. So stay tuned for more information on those sessions. And it's important to think about all of these being connected. It's a subset of the, all of the indicators that are on DataShare. So there are many, many more than the ones listed here. We just wanted to have this, um, this vetted list of indicators that um, that are important to each of the core conditions. And I want to note a few things about them. There are um, many that might be on a wish list status. They're not necessarily available yet, but because the data landscape changes so quickly, um, it's worth checking back to see which ones might have been added since you last visited. In fact, we just had some added in the last couple of days, thanks to Eric's work. Um, so just because something's missing now doesn't mean that it's not available. So you can think of this as sort of a shell of what's currently available, what's emerging and improving as a data source, and what might, might be available in the near future. And you also have the option of suggesting um, data sources and points um, as you come across them or feel a need for them. So this has all come a very long way in the three years since DataShare launched. It will continue to improve and fill out, but um, again, encourage you to check back frequently to see if something that has been missing previously has been added. And so today we're gonna work with this as it is, flaws, gaps, and also what's there. And some of the points of data that are there, some of the indicators that are there have more, uh, more depth to them than others. So that, that again is just a feature of um, what this looks like. But we hope that we can convince you today and in these sessions to use what's here as a springboard for discussion and thinking about what we can all do as a community to contribute to equitable health and well-being for everyone in our county. And today's focus um, on economic security and social mobility will, will have breakout groups that go into each of these four indicators that you see here. And we'll have a chance to discuss them in more depth in the small breakout groups. So um, we'll place you into your breakout rooms. There will be um, a group for each of the impact areas, and one group will stay with me in the main room. And I'm going to switch back to our slides. When you get into your breakout room, you'll have about 20 minutes total, and you'll receive a two-minute um, warning when, when things are wrapping up. Um, we will do a quick round of introductions in the breakout rooms, and then it would be great if you could select somebody besides us to report back to the main group, and we will, of course, help. Um, we will cover these questions for the, for the indicator in each group. So we want to know what stories the indicators tell about the assets and strengths of people and places in our communities. We also want to know what's missing or what gaps you notice. Um, it could be data from anecdotes or people you work with. It could be a survey or something that's not yet available on DataShare, um, hasn't been published or, or um, released in that, in that way. And then there might be questions that we could or should be asking about the bias behind data, the limits of the available data, the context that we are looking at, at the data in. And the purpose of looking at all this is really to think about the programs and practices and policies 
that are either in place or would be needed to create better conditions for optimal economic security and social mobility. And then we'll talk about how we can build on the data that we have to measure and track things, to learn more about what works and to track our collective impact. So that's a lot to cover in 20 minutes. We'll just see how far we get for each of these. But just, um, this, just think of this as a way to dive into the data on data share and particularly on the results menu and use it um, in ways that, that work for you. So this is just one, one way to think about stimulating these discussions. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Nicole to place us in our groups. And you'll see these same questions in the chat for reference. Okay, and um, I think I'm just doing a little bit of final resorting. Some people are dropping off. Oh, okay. So just even out the groups a little some. bit. Yeah, we'll may, maybe have some smaller groups. Okay, I'm gonna open them up. All right, see you on the other side. So can you see the results menu here? Yes. So today we're gonna to click on the first one if you're following along and you're welcome to on your, on your device, increased economic vitality. And you can see that this is one of four that are associated with the core condition of economic security and social mobility. When I click on economic security and social mobility and this first indicator, impact one, increased economic vitality, we get a snapshot of what's available. So we can see that one indicator that's tracked here on data share and associated with this impact and core condition is unemployed workers in the civilian labor force. For this particular indicator, we have a comparison to prior values to California counties to the California state value and the US value. And we have an option to see more data, which I'll click on in just a moment. But I'm also gonna scroll down to show you, unfortunately, an example of the missing wish list indicators, employment by industry, employment status in terms of full or part-time or seasonal, um, the jobless rate and the job growth by type of job, for example, is it a job with benefits? Is it a living wage? Um, what kinds of percentages of our local businesses are women and minority owned? Um, what percentage of our local businesses are classified as small businesses or cooperatives? And what is the measure of income inequality? We do have that one. And so this is just an example of what I was talking about earlier, that people thought these would be important things to track, but we don't have them yet. I'm but so sorry, Nicole. I, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. But I think my day, your uh, your mic is making a sound. My mic? Uh, no, I think it's my day. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to no. mute it. Let's see if that is. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now it's better. <laughs> thank you, Maite, and, and thank you, Claudia, for um, catching that. Um, but Maite, we can still hear you if you want to make a comment or question, or feel free to use the chat. So don't let that stop you. Um, so um, again, this is something that has um, some data, some missing data, um, I'm going to click on the see more data piece here so you can see what that looks like. And so this is very typical of the data share indicators that we do have. So there, there's a description of what it is, 16 years and over who are unemployed. It tells you the figure for the whole county and the source. So this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and it's pretty recent. It's from June of 2022. 
One of the advantages of data share, in case you're less familiar with it, is that they do the work of updating these things. So you, when, you, when something is on data share, it means that it's the most recent available because they've been looking to see when things are updated. So you don't have to do that hunting on your own of going to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, digging up the statistic, figuring out which is the most recent version. If there are some aspects of it, um, like this says it doesn't include the Bureau of Label Statistics annual benchmarking revisions. I don't personally know what that is, but um, if that became relevant to using this data in some way, you could explore that. We can see here, if you scroll over, are, are you seeing the pop-up box when I scroll over these? So it's the comparison to California counties that says it's in the best, it's in the top half, the best 50%, but borderline. And then compared to the US though, second worst quartile of counties, so below the average, lower and better for the California value. So you can see how depending on what, what point you want to make and what you're looking at with the data and what you want to explore, you can scroll over these different lines to get a little bit more detail. And these charts you can download as a JPEG, a PDF, or the actual data into a, an Excel file so that you can work with it in whatever way would be useful to you. Maybe you wanna include this chart in a presentation, so that's how you could do that. Or a report, for example. Now this particular indicator doesn't have a lot of what we would call um, disaggregated data or more specific data. For example, breakdowns by age, by race, ethnicity, by geographic part of the county. But a lot of indicators do, and that would show up right here in this corner. And then I also just want to point out that even if the data point itself isn't perfect for your purposes, there's a lot on data share. If you scroll down, you can see some related indicators. So these are not part of the results menu, but they are on data share. So data share has determined that these are relevant to employment or unemployment. So how many people are living below the poverty level in our county? What's the projected food insecurity rate? How many people who are age 65 and over are living in below the poverty level? So those are, um, those are indicators that right out of the gate, DataShare is suggesting are relevant to this one. And I just, you know, uh, data share, it rewards more time spent. So if you if you kind of explore and set aside some time to look through some of these links, you can see that there are many, many others and you can go down a lot of rabbit holes, which may or may not be um, appealing to you depending on how much time you have, but there really is a lot behind each of these. So I encourage you to do that. And then you can also look at some of the um, related reports that might be here. So for example, there are some reports you may or may not be aware of. Some of them are state reports. Some of them are relevant to our county. Um, there's just a lot more here that you can explore. So I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen now and see if we can get into some questions about, um, about all of this. So looking at something like the unemployment rate for the workforce in Santa Cruz County, what, what does that tell you? What, what does it say about our strengths in our county or the assets we may have in place? Does anything come to mind looking at just that one indicator or those, those sets of things? Or what, what questions does it raise for you? It 
So something that I, for example, something that I didn't know and I really like here is that we can compare with other counties mm -hmm. um, in California and the country. And I think that, for example, for SELS, that's really important um, for getting more grants, um, you know, and show like, um, well, this is not exactly what we will need, but uh, to know that there is that this comparison, it's, it's really takes my attention. I think it will be very useful. Okay, great. That's good to hear, Claudia. And um, just from the perspective of your different organizations and the work that you do. So for example, Claudia, you work with senior legal services, yeah. and there is that link to the, um, the poverty level for people 65 and over. Um, are there other aspects of this that either um, feel like they're missing or would be useful to have in terms of economic security and mobility for the work that you do? So I think something that I, I, I don't see here is, um, and I'm interested, is the communications like with other organizations. Like, I don't know if there is something like that, you know, because that's, Something that at SELS we do a lot is to refer clients that are, um, I don't know, having housing issues and they are borderline homeless. And, you know, how is the communication between other nonprofits? I don't see something like that. And I think it's important because when we apply for a grant, we always mention that, that we're a community and we want always to improve the community. So I don't know if I'm missing that. Well, I don't know if this is exactly like, you know, referral type information, but there are some links here, both for food insecurity and homelessness uh -huh. at the bottom. And those, it's not a complete list. Those are just the ones that DataShare happens to know about. So that might be helpful. Just yeah. to, anybody else? Are there either um, gaps or, or ways that you would use this information? Any any other context for the data that we have that people should be aware of? What about programs or policies or practices that either you're working on or or would be on your own wish list that would help address some of these issues of um, just the the economic security of seniors for example or whatever group you work with Maite? hi in in our case I think it would be a great idea to figure, figured out a way to do recruitments because we only conduct recruitments via the internet. And I don't think, um, I don't think every household has a computer, right? So it will be a wonderful idea to go to like, I don't know, like a farmer's markets or like flea markets, or even like just doing some sort of recruitments, like open the a day in the building, right? And just like have different departments, mainly like personnel, human resources, right? They can provide information, but as well, like every department can promote, right? What we do. And I just think it will be a great idea. And I believe that that will help. Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion, my thing. So the, the idea that some of these employment options might not be equitably available to people because of the way that people learn about them. Correct. And opening that up to these really livable wage jobs with some benefit. Right. You may not may not have a pathway to. That's great. What what else comes to mind as policies that could change or programs that that could help um, increase economic vitality for groups that are maybe not as able to participate in the economy the way they'd like. We have about two minutes left in our countdown here. So we're bar barely through a couple of these questions, which we kind of thought might happen. <laughs> 
Any other thoughts about building on the, the data that we do have or the, the programs and policies? You know, what, what questions do you have about some of the economic vitality indicators, either the ones we do have or the ones that are missing? Uh, my question is how large the sample was for this graph. And I'd like to also know like the demographics on who exactly is represented in this unemployment workers in the civil and then labor force. Okay. And an idea that I had, because um, United Way specifically works with youth and families as well. And to be able to target those families, I feel like, you know, when parents pick up their kids out from school, there's always like a sign off sheet on an iPad or paper. And there's always technology um, available you know, in the school system. And I feel like if there was always like a survey whenever they would check out their kids, it could potentially be added to this data as well. Okay, so that's that's a great point, Amanda. There might be a local source of something that um, could add a layer or dimension to what we see here from this National Bureau of Labor Statistics source. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any more detail on how they gather this information. Um, whether it's from employers. I'm also, uh, my name is Natalie. I'm Amanda's intern. So. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Sorry, you're showing up as Amanda. Welcome, Natalie. Um, let me see if there's any details here on this data source. Just trying to scroll down. Might take a little more work. Employment. Labor force statistics. So that's a population survey, it says. Quarterly census of employment and wages. So these might be based on um, other data sources. I see everyone's back in our main room. Welcome back, everyone. So now we have a chance to hear what you all discussed. I don't know about the other groups. We didn't quite get through all our questions, but we made some, some headway. Um, do we have a volunteer who'd like to report out? Before we do that, Nicole, do you wanna um, mention the feedback? Oh yes, thank survey you. Survey in Google right. Forms so that thank Gisela you. can post it. Thank you. Um, we have a feedback form for this session that we, and we pay a lot of attention to your feedback in customizing these sessions. And since we have some coming up, we would love to know what, what works for you about this. And um, we will post this again at the end of the session, but just in case you have a chance to fill it out now, in case you need to get to another meeting or something like that, we're posting it in the chat. So please do um, take a moment to fill that out for us. We really appreciate it. I'll, I'll start off for our group reporting out, and I just want right. to explain myself. I have two other Todd living sons here. One is um, Bertha. She's in our, our main office. She's our tenant specialist and works with data with us. And the other one of me is Julie Madrona. She's our um, transition specialist for our school. Wow. And I feel, I feel kind of bad because I was, I kind of, um, maybe I rabbit hole our, our group a little bit. I started asking about questions about um, our, so our lens is gonna be adult education and we provide uh, ESL and quick uh, career CTE classes in the medical field and cosmetology and and uh, tech along with um, uh, GED and high school diploma. And so I was kind of trying to figure out how do I, if we're gonna put classes somewhere, how can this data help us locate where a great place would be for an ESL class versus a GED class. And just, we sort of know, you know, and it's, it's not hard data, but we tend to have ESL classes in Watsonville. We feel like we need to have more GED high school diploma classes up in San Lorenzo Valley area. Um, so anyways, I just kind of sidelined our group and started talking about me. So I apologize. <laughs> um, well, does, does anyone else from Todd's group want to, chime in with either something they didn't get to raise during that session or, um, or, or even some other dimensions of what Todd's already raised. Todd, number one. <laughs> I technically have probably number three, but that's oh, okay. okay. Todd, number three. 
I'm not sure which Todd we had. <laughs> you must have had uh, Julie because uh, me and Bertha were in the other group together. Oh, okay. So we, so didn't, have, we didn't have a Todd per group. <laughs> Um, I thought that um, Todd's questions were helpful in our group, um, and also there was just like how how the breakdown of you know when you're really thinking about a particular service as as Todd is that um, how those breakdowns regionally are helpful and how really even just breaking down into a census. Um, uh, view is even more helpful, right? If you're going to open the doors somewhere, or if you have mobile uh, teaching units, um, then you are you going to open the doors in, you know, Coralitos, or are you going to open the doors in Freedom? It can make all the difference. And so having that breakdown um, for me, as he was walking through his needs, I was like, oh, wow, this is um, you know, as a user of that service, like I, I can see how this would be really helpful if it was just outside of my door instead of even those 10 minutes of travel, which, which can be um, a barrier. Right. Thanks, Eva. And I, I would encourage everyone if, you know, to you, you were assigned to a group to dive into one of the um, impact areas, but explore the others as we're talking so that you can see what, what's being referenced in terms of the, each indicator is really different, as we've mentioned. Some have a lot more um, currently available than others. And so this is a great way to familiarize yourself with the different kinds of sources and levels of detail of the indicators if you just wanna follow along. Okay, thanks, Todd and Eva. Let's see, um, Claudia, do you wanna report out on on our group discussion? Yes. So um, uh, we were going through the indicators through economic, um, well, the economic indicators. And it was really interesting to see, like, my perspective as working on a legal nonprofit. So for me, it's kind of very straightforward that I need to know how many cases we have and the type of law. And it's like very direct. But it was interesting to hear from uh, Maite from Community Bridges and also Natalia from United Way. They were talking about a very different like ways to use the indicators. Like, for example, Maite was uh, thinking like these uh, indicators could help her for recurring. Um, and, and that was interesting, like how they can uh, be connected with like um other sources to get like computers for example and also natalia natalia thought about how to collect like other sources to collect information easily and she mentioned for example that they work with the youth community and it's uh, they have like technology to who sign up and, and they have that information so how she she was asking how that will be collected for this um for data share point. So that was interesting to see that there are like different ways to use this uh, information. Um, also, I ask a question regarding if there is more information about like community between like referrals among other nonprofits, because for um, SELS, it's really important for us to share um, some of our clients to homeless shelters or you know like or um like food banks and it was interesting to see like if you scroll down there are like some information about like uh specific nonprofits working on these areas so that was very useful to know and it's a uh, I mean, I'm super impressed how organized is all this information. And I think it made me realize that I should take more advantage of this for our reports because I'm just in a bubble of my organization. Aren't, aren't we all? So thank you, Claudia. <laughs> but yeah, we did just, we did, um, because the indicator we looked at didn't have a lot to it in terms of disaggregated data or other, other indicators, we did spend more time in the scrolling down into some of the other links and resources. So I encourage everyone to do that as well. There's just a wealth of links um, to other indicators, to reports, to um, local partners. Um, so just uh, can't say often enough how much data share rewards spending some extra time um, going down some rabbit holes there. Okay, let's see. How and about- Nicole, before yeah. we move on, can you just, um, 
uh, or Claudia, tell us what was the impact area that your group was looking at and, and what was the specific indicator? Just so if we weren't sure. in that group, we have yeah, a sure. sense of. We were looking at increased economic vitality, which is the first impact area. And the data indicator that we looked at was the unemployed workers in the civilian labor force, which is a Bureau of Labor, labor Statistics um, measure. So it's just, uh, it has some county level data, but not a lot of, not, not any disaggregation, age, race, ethnicity, geographic part of the county. Okay, let's see. Um, how about how about your group, Nicole? Who's reporting out for you? We actually forgot to pick someone, so I'm going to ask okay. Ramona or Rita or Efren. Would one of you be interested in doing a short report out for our group? I can start us yeah, off and then, that, oh, yep. yeah, go ahead, Ramona, thanks. Um, yeah, we we had, um, of course, now I'm forgetting the name of it, the economic um, indicators and sort of uh, chose um, one to do a deeper dive on and, um, you know, found that there was definitely, I think that's one of the ones that's like more under development still. So there's um, some indicators that, that didn't have um information available and um but we did dive into the ones that were available and found that like um in a lot of cases you know asked uh, prompted more questions um and you know we discussed how that uh process of making meaning from the from the data that's available from the graphs that are available is really kind of where the where the rubber heat hits the road. And um, we also discussed, you know, how our different organizations uh, might use the information. Yeah, that was a great summary. Thanks for doing that, Ramona. And, um, and we also didn't get through all the questions and part of it was because we started off in our introductions, Ramona and Rita and Efren each said a little bit about what, um, made them curious about data share or what drew them to today's session. And um, both Ramona and Efren talked about how their organizations do countywide assessments every two years in, in Community Action Board's case, every five years in Head Start's case, and the, a little bit of um, finding that data share doesn't currently have all of the data points that they would be interested in for their assessment. But then also we realized, oh, there may be some data from their respective community-wide assessments that uh, at the very least could be added to the resources section on data share, but also potentially those might be good indicators, uh, what we call the locally produced or locally sourced data that uh, might help fill some of those gaps on data share. So we also went down a little bit of a um, tangent or rabbit hole, but it was a great discussion. That's great. Anything else from, from that group? And if you do have local data sources that you'd like to um, consider sharing via data share, Eva and Eric, be great contacts for that. Just exploring how that happens and how it works. So. Eric, impact for increased generational wealth. Who who in your group is reporting out? Unfortunately, Nicole, we as well ran out of time with all the questions. Uh, if uh, Cindy or Myra would like to uh, hop in on this one, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, currently, Pearl's having uh, technical issues with her microphone. Okay. And at one point, Cindy had stepped away. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Cindy, are you back? Maybe not quite yet. Okay. Okay, so uh, what we pretty much uh, got through home ownership and we were asked a lot of questions in regards to um, like how come some of the data does not, sh or like does not tell a story on, in terms of like gentrific gentrification in the area in regards to certain uh, counties, mm -hmm. like, 
and that type of stuff. And along with show how, how and showing more data in respect to who's renting versus who actually owns a house and um, type of investment properties and eventually just, yeah, pretty much it. Yeah, there's certainly a lot to unpack with in our county and other counties with with very high housing prices and um, just you know what what those those data points may mean in another place is different here. So those are yeah. great questions to ask. I want to just add a little bit more <laughs> to what was talked about in our group, which was home ownership and just looking at this. Um, topic under the court conditions. It's like, yes, it's great to increase property value, but what does that do to our underserved populations? There are so much stories that, you know, a lot of people don't hear of. I mean, I might hear of them because I work at a family resource center collective. We're seeing these families that are coming through where we see property improvements and we're seeing people getting evicted or served with notices to vacate the property because they're going to do improvements and they're welcomed back home, but their increase, the increase in property value increases their rent prices. So what is this really, what is really happening? Like there's this portion of gentrification that's not being added into the core conditions and what it really means when we're looking towards increasing property value property values. Um, yeah, I, and as you said, Nicole, there's a lot to unpack and there's so much more I can say on this. <laughs> and there's so much more that needs to be, you know, looked at when we really talk about like these home improvements. It's great that we we would love to see, you know, more and more people own, own homes, but then there's this these other things that need to happen before people can actually um, become homeowners and invest in their properties. And with that comes income, with that, with that comes education. I think Tom mentioned GED. And then there's, there's a lot of these other components that come into play. And I'll, I won't take much more time because there's just so much more. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. But that's, ex but that's exactly, Myra, that's exactly why we want to have these conversations is to provide that context. And as we mentioned earlier, there's no way that a results menu with um, a, you know, a set of indicators can cover every piece of that context. But um, I mean, without being, what, what we were trying to avoid was being thousands of indicators for people to go through. But we do want that context to be evident and discussed and at play when we talk about these things. And so some of those um, limitations on the data are baked into how data are collected. And that's part of what we've been discussing. They don't go far enough in giving us some nuance and context. They have some bias embedded in them and all those kinds of things. But the only way that we can make these data more useful for our own county and for improving um, the situations that we see is to have these kinds of conversations about what's missing and what the implications are for programs and policies. So we're excited to hear um, that kind of analysis of the data. That's really why we're here. And we also, um, one of the things that you mentioned is another thing to highlight about the core conditions and the results menu. And in fact, everything on DataShare is how connected these are. So we may be looking today at economic security and mobility, but we know that's connected to housing. We know it's connected to education and lifelong learning. We know it's connected to different aspects of a thriving community. So we, while we're focused on one uh, core condition or, or a couple of them at a time, we always wanna remind ourselves and others that they're connected to every other one. Um, so that's that's a really important um, point to bring out when you follow the the other indicators part on um, under each indicator, you will see those links to to other um, other indicators and other core conditions as well. because it's really hard to hard to look at them in isolation and, and we shouldn't. So thanks for that reminder. Yeah, and we also have a housing spotlight that we put out in May that kind of um, 
goes a little bit more in depth um, about housing indicators are, although we don't have like a, a rate of gentrification measure, but it might be of interest, um, might if you're looking um, those are under data spotlights. Yeah, I think that would be great just to see and review because I, when um, Eric was reviewing the data and sharing it and I was like in the back of my head, I was just thinking, wow, you know, when we're increasing property value and looking at these percentages, there's just so much more to look into and, you know, what as a community, as advocates, and, you know, overall, what are we doing to halt some of these things? Or, you know, is the overall, how does gentrification come into play and what are we doing, if anything, to, to stop it? Because we see a lot of families moving away to other counties. Um, that's the reality. And when I, and I see that happening to a lot of the families that we serve and even previous employees that have been you know in the agency and that's just the reality mm -hmm. all right thank you anything else um from that group um, this is cindy i'm i'm back i'm sorry i had to step away no worries welcome back cindy thank you it was a really great discussion, and um, I guess one thing I would just add would be, um, I wonder if somehow there could be a couple of suggestions, maybe three, you know, two, three or four other indicators you can put on the page, because it's really hard to get us, like, if you want to just look at one indicator and individually, sometimes it's, you know, it's hard to interpret, you know, and they might be misinterpreted. So what other indicators can you put maybe on the bottom? Let's say these are um, connected. That would give a, more of a story, you know, of um, so home ownership investment in addition to a couple of other different indicators that might. Uh, we were talking about stories and what's missing in, when you see just that one indicator. And so we also were talking about how can you, how can you incorporate a story on that page of a local, you know, a, a community voice to tell the story and so to give some context. Uh, as we were thinking about ways to perhaps do that. That's great, Cindy. Uh, what well, I forgot to mention because we ran out of time, but if, you, if you're still on the homeowners page, if you scroll down, there's a section that says related content for ownership or for home ownership. And right under that gives a little bit more Another indicator that's related to this type of content. In this case, it would be mortgage mortgage owners spending thirty percent or more of or of household income on housing, which may is maybe what you're alluding to. Right. Yeah, that and you know some maybe information on rent renters, like we were talking about. Um, um, maybe well, I don't know what would be. Um, so a measure of, you know, transition or gentrification, as um, Myra was mentioning. And I'm curious, does anybody know of publicly available data like that, that would be something to look into? Because oftentimes that's something we've found with a lot of the um, indicators and data share where you see that <laughs> phrase data unavailable at this time. It's usually because there was some kind of suggestion or interest in, oh, it'd be great if, you know, if we could see this kind of data, um, but either we haven't been able to access that data or there isn't a data source that exists. But if that's kind of the continuous hunt we're on, that if someone knows of a great source that, that would help uh, paint that fuller picture about things like gentrification or about you know, moving out, who's moving out of the area. Uh, if anybody knows of data sources like that, that's the kind of thing that I think uh, Evan, Eric, but also welcomes so, so that we can look into yeah. other ways I, to fill some of those data gaps. Nicole, I think that the No Place Like Home, the UCSC project might have some information on gentrification. I know I've also 
uh, similarly looked for data around who's moving out of the area because it's having a big impact on our program as well. And I'll, I will say um, I've had to rely primarily on uh, news stories. That's where I've seen it most and, you, you know, use that as my source. It's not as good as, you know, finding something from the census or whatnot, but um, that has been how I've been able to fill some of those gaps for like things that haven't been studied as in depth or are brand new or just the, you know, the data source isn't, isn't what I would like. Thanks for one. I put a link in the chat. That sounds like an interesting idea. If there could be links to, you know, stories, news stories, um, in the community. Okay. Thanks, Cindy and Ramona. Any other comments from any of the groups? Let's raise other other questions for you about data sources or ways to work with these indicators. I think I just wanna to underscore too, just the value of this kind of discussion. We were starting to touch on that in our group that it's great to be able to find an indicator and some data and data share. Um, and also sometimes it's just, uh, and I think Ramona shared this in, as part of our group's report back, sometimes just the process of being able to identify, okay, what other questions is it raising? Um, like in our group, Rita had a whole, <laughs> several questions that came to mind just from looking at that one simple chart about unbanked households. Uh, and Ramona also was, at, was wondering like, well, what are the numbers? Like, what are the ends um, behind these percentages to help us understand like, is that increase that's happened in the last couple, you know, the lot between the last two measurement points, like how big is that jump? Is it, how big, how much of a concern is it? So just like, it sparked a lot of questions, even, you know, Rita was wondering who's prosperity now? Where did this data come from? Why did they stop <laughs> collecting it or, or analyzing it in two, 2017? Like that kind of thought process and, and questioning is part of what we consider data literacy. It's part of what we consider using data with an equity lens, because then it might point you to, oh, I need to be looking for other information, whether it's quantitative data from another source or qualitative data from, you know, interviews or focus groups or, you know, media stories, like where, wherever else, you know, you can find data to help, again, paint a fuller picture of, a situation or a, or a need or a circumstance. Um, and that sometimes after going through that kind of line of questioning, you might decide, ooh, there isn't enough to really make that data point useful. Like by trying to share that without enough context might actually uh, create the potential to cause some harm or to reinforce some narratives or stereotypes that, um, that actually <laughs> trying to combat or eliminate. So like even just being able to have these kinds of discussions, I think is a, even if we don't get that immediate satisfaction of, oh, here's that data, um, it's still a really valuable process to go through. Yes, absolutely. Um, echo all of that. And then um, in terms of having more of these discussions, we do have our next one coming up. So I'll share my screen again. Let's see. So we will be looking at two of the core conditions together, thriving families and community connectedness, and that will happen on Thursday, December 1st, same time, 10 to 11.15. And you'll be getting a notice about that as well, but just so you um, have that on your radar and possibly on your calendars, just wanted to let you know that. Um, if you haven't already filled out the um, feedback form, we'll put the link in the chat again, and we really encourage you to do that. And then we also wanted to put a link in the chat to an upcoming um, co-sponsored Core Institute event with uh, Monarch Services and Walnut Avenue Family and Women's Center and the Commission 
for the Prevention of Violence Against Women and the Youth Action Network. And that is a um, bystander intervention training that is designed to address gender-based street harassment, but so many other situations as well. And if you haven't heard of um, Right to Be, which used to be called Hollaback, they have a very um, accessible, direct set of tools to share in that training um, that will help you feel empowered to intervene in situations that feel uncomfortable on different levels. Um, Nicole and I both had a chance to attend it last year and it's really a great training. We're so glad that it's coming to Santa Cruz County and that's on Monday, October 3rd from 5 to 6.30 p.m. So it's an evening event. We were hoping to get more people who might not be able to attend during the day it's free. Um, please share it widely in your networks. The flyer is in the chat and we encourage you to spread the word. And Claudia, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I just wanted to say that I'm very thankful for uh, you encourage us to use this data because what I realize is that data is everywhere and it's like we can find it in like everywhere <laughs> really online. But the difference is how we use it. And thank you for encouraging us to like go there and understand every detail of these uh, indicators. You are so welcome. And thank you for participating in these sessions because this is it's really all of your questions and the ways, the different ways that you use data and the ways, the, the creative ways that you address some of these gaps and help us provide context that that really make it useful. So we appreciate everyone being here and participating, and we hope to see you next time. Are there any other questions while we're gathered together? Hi, um, just um, a thought about, you know, like I mentioned in my group, I'm not, I don't poke around in data share as much as I should. <laughs> There's a lot of great stuff in there, um, but it, but it makes me think, okay, well, it, it sounds like folks who are poking around in there are, are community-based organizations and, you know, folks who, who offer services, um, which is great. But then I'm wondering, well, how do we then take, take this so that, like, community members and residents are, are able to use some of this info when they go to say like a, a city council meeting or a board of supervisors meeting or or a you know a school district meeting and then say mm -hmm. um you know i'm advocating for this in my neighborhood or i'm advocating for this for my child and here's the data that points that i'm underserved or mm -hmm. i don't know just just kind of like a a, a thought of like uh, has has data shared thought about taking it there or is or is it like we're currently focused on on organizations and 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 you know working with them to be able to use use the data and um, i can see you itching to go there go ahead <laughs> rita you got people i'll train them i'll walk them through anything they want to walk through i'll look at their goals and see which data aligns i'd be happy to put together a brief report which is a tool that is free and available to anyone who goes onto the site but it can be a barrier if you haven't utilized it previously <clears throat> just because it's um you know it's just another tool that you have to learn um also the the core um these trainings that we put on that are topic based are just part of our training series so um right now uh data share is also doing um co-sponsored trainings with cradle to career and we have one um in october um october 13th that is specific to looking at data and sharing it with your community so looking at your own data and sharing your own data with your community um uh to create an advocacy platform um and that's a you know that's a community-based group and so we work with their parent leaders uh group um both here in the county and in monterey county so that's one example in which we've seen that the data is utilized by 
parents, uh, which was your specific question. Um, but if you organize with a group of parents um, that is looking to leverage data, I do think that the hand on, like hand in hand approach um, is the most helpful way. So I'd be happy to set up a private, you know, um, training uh, and it can be in person if that's better for your group um, with, with the platform. And also just, um, I, I have an advocacy background, so that's the route that I go. But if you guys have other goals, um, then we can, um, you know, discuss what the goals of the training would be together. We can create something that would be most useful for your, um, for your constituents or, or group. Um, I'd be happy to put that together in whatever format makes sense. Great offer. Thank you. <laughs> I can, I can see a lot of scribbling going on. <laughs> and um, if you don't have Eva's email, Eva, do you want to just put your email in the chat real quick? Just make it easy. I'll put our data share email because some of the questions or requests might be, depending on what you're yeah, thinking, great. might be more appropriate for Eric. But I'll go ahead and um, you can just email us at the data share email and I'll... Um, sift through any requests. Great, thanks. And yes, yet another way that data share has untapped corners and layers. Um, reports, training, dashboards, lots of customization options. Um, and, it, and any help that you need um, is available one way or the other. So, and there are lots of great tutorials on there. Um, so it does take some time to explore, but Again, it does, it does reward time spent. So put in a plug for that. Any other questions, suggestions, feedback? Okay. I think that is it for us. We'll look forward to seeing you at any of these upcoming events or preferably all of them. So have a great day, everyone. See you soon.